Oh, this one. Yeah, you were just like showing it. it to me literally right before we went live. And that, dude. Yeah, yeah, I, I love mean, it. My daughter got me it for Christmas. It's amazing. Yeah, Anyways, I mean, what are we doing today, Bobby? Dude, we have got the one and only Batman discussion part two. Batman, when I say one and only, he, there's no other comic book character like him, in my opinion. He's no, I agree. definitely the best to read. He's the most tormented. And it's on a deeper level. Yeah, Spider-Man's tormented and that's fun and everything. But like Batman's life started out terrible. Yeah, it did. You know, there's yeah, very did. little time in his life where it wasn't terrible. And I just, unfortunately, those characters are so much more interesting, which is what's funny about the two we're going to talk about. Because we did that Batman discussion the first time. And even though I, I said the, the entire franchise on there, we ended up only talking about the first two for the first two hours. Because we love, yeah. Because they were so good. They're just you know, too, there's a lot to talk about. Too good, and and I could have gone honestly another two hours. Yeah, easy. And those are so good. And as as far as that character we love of Batman, Michael Keaton portrays those 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 moments as Bruce Wayne. It works well enough, but he portrays a tormented person. You know what I mean? He yeah, one hundred percent. Who's Go behind ahead. the eyes? You can see that there's torment. For sure. Like even in part two, when he's talking to Max Shrek and he's like in the office talking to him and everything, you could see even behind those eyes while he might be putting on that Bruce Wayne facade. You could see like the picture of him sitting there just waiting. Yeah. And then and he turns and looks at the light. Oh, man. I mean, that just looks like a we're, guy we're who, talking about them again. Yeah, no. So <laughs> the reason I'm talking about him is, is because this one introduces a new Batman. So up until it this does. point, up until... Batman Forever, we had only seen Michael Keaton. And then we start seeing posters of this right here. So the first time what you saw your... this poster, what did you think? Oh, my God, this looks amazing. Because I was so young. I, like, I was ready for this. I loved Batman Returns. And I, at the age that I was at, I didn't really care that there was going to be a new Batman. Like, because that picture, that image, and the marketing for this movie before it came out, absolutely blew me away batman was my favorite character like i used to love superman before him but then seeing that robin was going to be in it like at the time everything just looked perfect his suit looked perfect um i don't think it now but back then i absolutely adored it and the music they had good promotion they had the u2 song and then they had seal and it was like the excitement was just building you didn't really get that with batman returns yeah, I agree with you, man. I mean, Batman Returns was even less of a pop culture feel than Batman. Batman had yeah. prints and all that stuff involved with it, and so it definitely had it, that it was taking over. Batman Returns did take over, but it was more like in the toys. Uh, it took over in, like, McDonald's. I don't know if that did it over there. McDonald's um, was a huge... I had that it was damaged because they couldn't sell the toys because of the violence that was in, in Batman Returns maybe that happened somewhere but where i grew up i ended up getting all the batman i remember the batman cups i got from mcdonald's just all kinds of stuff but yeah anyways you know then, then when batman forever and robin came out it was taco bell that handled it i don't know if you remember that no but we had mcdonald's over here and you get these glass cups um oh they were plastic but they, they look like glass like a tanker cup mm -hmm. like a mug and it would be the shape of the Riddler, or it would be the shape of Tommy Lee Jones. And it was everywhere, the market. And I would just, I remember it, and I was so excited. Man, and like you said with U2, I mean, it was the MTV Batman. And, yep. it, no, and not just the music. Already, we had already had the crazy U2 song. We had the Seal song. And then when you're watching it, you realize there's like, um, oh, what's that? The Offspring has a song in there. Smashing yeah, yeah. Pumpkin. When Smashing Pumpkins was on Batman and Robin, but it definitely was a big soundtrack. But even the neon tone to it, to me, that was mo more of the MTV vibe that I got. Let's you know talk about how it opens. I mean, it's a, a different style of credits, a different composer with the music. The only thing that's coming across was uh, Pat Hingle and Michael Go Goff. Michael Goff and, and then Peter Goober, I think. I think Who they was were he? Also, he was the, one of the other producers that was involved right, okay. in part one and two. Yeah. So right, I think okay. he's a big Warner brothers guy. So yeah, you're right. The, 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 the I, I thought I was, I thought I'd had that downloaded, but the credits are like flying at the screen in a weird way. And like, yeah, it was, it was new. It was different. And as soon as you see the first scene, the turn had changed, you know, the, the first line, 
the first line was a big thing for McDonald's as a kind of, you know, I'll get drive through. And it was like, I know, but as a kid, I loved it. Like I was, you know, I thought this is brilliant. Well, because there was only one or two, three lines like that really in the movie, whereas Batman and Robin, not so much, but yeah, this one yeah. had that I'll get drive through thing was kind of cool. You know, it, 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 it worked. And the fact that they had done that, I don't know if you remember the original commercial for the Batman one, like 1989, no, one, no. where it was like, he was like the diet Coke commercial where he calls Alfred and he's out there and he's like, it seems we need one diet Coke. And then it shows the Batmobile like driving off. And it's just obviously a clip from the film. They didn't film anything yeah. extra except the Alfred part, but yeah, the same thing with this man. It was just, I think a nod to that when he's like, okay, drive through. Everybody's just like, hey, Batman's back, baby. And yeah. Then, and we're introduced to him so quick, even though it's a new actor, it's a new Batmobile. But you, you, know? you don't care though, which man, I can't believe I didn't get that, uh, uh, the picture of the man, I was trying to download so many pictures and then I ran out of space. I didn't get a picture of the damn Batmobile, which is stupid. Um, do you think yeah. that the, do, how do you feel about the Batmobile now? Like at the time, I like, I thought this is cool. It's got lights. It looks, it looks cool. I still like the third. I still like Batman forever Batmobile. I really do. I think that it's got something about it that works for the tone they were going for for that film yeah. like if they would have kept the michael keaton batmobile that real long missile looking thing yeah. which i love but that felt more like a 1930s 40s like experiment which that entire car. city felt that way in the tim burton you know yeah. what i'm saying and his whole stuff like especially in that first movie the cars and everything just felt old whereas yeah. this was more of a cartoon you know yeah. what i mean it had more of a cartoon vibe where it wasn't childish but it had more of that, it was hip. And this, yep. the neon thing happened to work. I still think that the forever one is cool enough. Like, if that thing was sitting out right in front of my driveway right now, I'd be like, I want to drive this mofo around the block. You know? Yeah. 100%. <laughs> it's, it's the the one in Batman and Robin that I can't handle. That one's the really bad one. But The one with no roof or shields. Yeah, or where he's, and, no, and no face, like windshield guard either. He's just really? sitting there. Yeah, it's hilarious. <laughs> and it's only a single seater. Oh, yeah, it's just him. And it's it's like one little, it's like a a, a kayak. You know? Yeah. This is... <laughs> so stupid and so silly. It's yeah, like, no, it's Bat, you know, one of the best Batmobiles ever is on the, the Arkham games. Because he's like, it actually has like got all this practicality to it as far as what if he actually caught somebody? What if yeah, he had to exactly. take him in and things like that? I like that. Because uh, Batman's a smart dude. Now, talking about it opening up you know and then we see this bat symbol so they took yep. all that black and yellow away and it quickly yep. became blues and purples and greens you know what i mean yep. uh and and obviously thematically it's going to be green because the riddler's in there so they really used that that green and then that that, that red came from Tommy Lee jane jones playing two-face which i think he did a good job as far as what they were wanting him to do However, really? however, it's a terrible representation of Two Face. <laughs> I mean, like, a lot Tommy of people Jones say he's trying actor. to be. He, yeah, I love Tommy Lee Jones. Well, I, do I love him? He's, he's he's better than that. He's better than what he is in Batman Forever, in my opinion. But he, but he's not he's not like a shitty actor in Batman Forever. But it's it's not his best role sure? by any means. I don't think so. I think that they were saying, "Hey, we need something kooky and crazy like Jack Nicholson in the first yeah. one." So can you yeah. be Jack Nicholson? I think that's what they yeah. told him to do. I suppose, but you know, he, he could have said no. I don't think Warner Brothers had their. I don't think anybody had their finger on the of, on the pulse of, of comic book films at that time yet. You know what I'm saying? So, everybody yeah. involved, like even Jack Nicholson in the first Batman, he was so reluctant about it, even while filming. You know what What's I mean? Going on while lighting. Sorry. Yeah, I saw that. Now sometimes that'll happen. But yeah, okay. he was reluctant to even during filming. And I and I have to believe that Tommy Lee Jones was probably the same way, but this paycheck was probably so big. And he's like, well, shit, it worked for Jack Nicholson. Maybe it'll work for me too. And I think it was too much of a just let me try to do that again because comic book films weren't where they are today to now. It's like you can do a horror comic book movie. You can do a psychological comic book movie. You can do whatever you want now with the genre. But then they were slightly still kind of frowned upon. Yeah, I yeah. think because Two Face, like we know, and like, and we know now that there has to be the duality, and there was very little of the duality. It was just the evil ninety percent of the time. There was a couple of times where you know, where he throws the coin at the end, 
And he's like, yes, you're right, Bruce. And I'm thinking, you haven't been like this at all through this film. But even then when he's doing it, it's like, you know, he's like, you're right. Two sides of the guy. It's like he's exhausted and he's like, it's like his his character is like, all right, I'm done putting up the show. The Riddler's dead. You're right, Bruce. Two sides of the coin. You know what I mean? It's like it, yeah. it's like it fizzled out of him at the end or something, and not enough to make me care about it, really. Yeah, I mean, the, let's face it. It was Jim Carrey's movie. It was, and look, Jim was fantastic in it. I don't care what anybody yeah. says. I think he worked great again for what they were trying to tell him to do. I don't think that the people had their finger on the pulse with these characters. So I don't think that somebody understood truly who Edward Nigma can be like the Paul Dano Riddler, Riddler we're going to see coming up. That's much more of an idea of what the Riddler is in the comics. He's not a silly goofy guy, but Frank Gershon and the old series, the 1960 yeah. series, that's not the way the Riddler is in the comics. No, Jim exactly. Carrey was portraying him. Yeah. And again, that's from the directors and like, we want to go for a lighter turn. We want to sell more toys. I think that the director, Joel Schumacher was in his head only really knew the 1960s series. I don't think he really was too familiar with anything else. And I think, I feel like Batman and Robin, which we'll get to is literally just a sequel to the live action Batman movie from the sixties. <laughs> it is. And it shows. It I mean, does. it's truly the same tone, the same gimmicks. It's fake. Things don't look right, but we'll get to that. This one, okay, so let's, I say, yeah, Paul this one was, well, the, first off, let me just say this one was still produced by Tim Burton. A lot of people don't know that. I mean, his name comes up. It yeah, just it come says up, but... produced by Tim Burton. <clears throat> Do you not think that he probably had zero involvement in it? Tim Burton? Yeah. I mean, like, they put his name there, but is that not to let's say, like, look, he's still involved? I think he is what kept them out of making Batman and Robin the first time. I think he is what still made that movie have whatever coolness and darkness it did have. I think that's because of Burton still being involved. I think if he wouldn't have been involved, like he wasn't involved in Batman and Robin, then we would have gotten what we got with Batman and Robin and Batman forever. Does that make sense? Yeah. So let's talk about Val Kilmer when he first swings down onto the scene of the crime where Nicole Kidman is. There you go. Other way, I mean, that's where he's on the, on the on helicopter. The helicopter yeah. With Tommy Lee Jones. Okay, so I remember seeing that scene, and I think that's the worst visual effect in the movie. Oh, so no, was, that, that whole opening scene now, look, for the time, everybody thought it was awesome. No, no, I didn't. I didn't. Like, only that scene. It. Everything else is good. Like, Man, I, it, thought, it, I thought it was great at the time. I, th I really did. I thought, like, when I was in the theater, I was like, they didn't do this in the other Batman movies, you know? <laughs> well, the, the, the first part where you realize it's kind of more comic booky is when he's talking to the security guard inside the bank vault which is getting lifted by the helicopter and he says i need to borrow this and you hear a popping sound when he takes the hearing aid out That's oh it. Dude, and he goes <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah my goes, shoes are melting <laughs> it's boiling acid yeah but that suit right there and like the way val kilmer looks in it i think he looks awesome oh he looks great in it well, and that's the thing. They even used a lot of the similarities from that original, like the whole movie, he has pretty much the original bat suit we had seen in the first movie. They 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 reshaped the cowl a little bit for his head, obviously. But yeah, the and they shined part, it up. Yeah. Yeah, it wasn't as matty as the as the yeah. Keaton one was. But it's at the end where we see this whole new, like what I call sort of the new dawn of the new era of bat suits because christopher nolan's bat suit wasn't that much different aesthetically than the bat suit at the end of batman and forever it just had more working parts that made it actually movable function but as far yeah. as the the silver armor coatings and all the different padding covering up padding and all that the toy sales oh for sure but to me yeah. even as a kid i thought that clunky think stuff never looked as cool as this looked I hated it, and they did exactly the same in Batman and Robin. Like, you know, worse. Robin's costume. I mean, I love, I love the one in Batman and Robin. That's the best part for me. Like, um, I don't mind this one, and I, I thought he was a great casting choice. Um, he looks the part. I think he's the. He definitely is the best part about Batman and Robin. Um, yeah, and he also looks 
like basically what Tom Willing was to Smallville, that's what Chris O'Donnell was to Robin for me in that universe they that. were making for, yeah, for that, that universe. Yeah. And he's, he was fresh out of Scent of a Woman. He was like hot, hot property right then, as in like. Yeah, and, and he really is a good actor, you know? And like like this right here, like when I saw that, I was like, oh, wow. I was like a, a modern Robin. Like that, that I believed but, that he was Dick Grayson, you know? You, you know, when you watch that scene, like, and you've seen, you, you'll have seen the movie probably as many times as me, a million times. And yes. what, what was Two Faces intention by lifting the bomb up? Yeah, when he's like taking it out of the ground. Yeah, he's in like, you've got two minutes to tell me who is Batman, but then like it's on a winch. Wait, like, why I, would you take it to the top? It doesn't yeah, make I, sense. I really think, yeah, it's like people are going to be safer the higher the bomb gets. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> it doesn't make sense. But, yeah, and, yeah. And, and also, too, before I answer that question, this was in the time they still had the painted the painted yeah. scenes. So this yeah. is right outside of the circus. Uh, and that just, we accepted that. Did you see, you talk about CGI blowing it for you, but did you, didn't you accept this? I accept everything from the 90s, but towards the end of the 90s, if you, I reference everything to Jurassic Park, and if you don't top the first Jurassic Park, that's a good reference. Then, yeah, because they did it in '93 and they did it so well. So that's for me, good, that's a good bar to have. Like if it's pre or post Jurassic Park. You yeah, know what like I mean? forget Terminator Two. That that was still in its infancy. Like that was brilliant special effects, but there was nothing that beat the Tyrannosaurus Rex for me in Jurassic Park. Well, in Terminator Two. It was still mostly old school explosions and all that. It was only when T one thousand came on to, that when you actually saw this new crazy CG stuff that was really wacky. You know what I mean? Other That's than what that, I'm talking about, yeah, yeah. But so what I'm saying is, is that didn't happen throughout the film. Whereas Jurassic Park, it's like once you started seeing the dinosaurs, they had to do that for the entire rest of the film. So that whole raptor yeah. scene at the end, all of it, you know. Whereas Terminator, it was like you're waiting for the evil T one thousand moments here and there. But yeah, there's still a lot of practical. practical stuff where he's cutting his arm and all that. Love all but, that. Yeah. Oh yeah, it's great. We know we can talk about. So how it. did you feel? How did you feel about Val Kilmer um, when he went to his office and he had the tunnel all the way to the back cave? I thought it was dope, dude. I loved it. I love. I'm sure, he reaches two hundred miles an hour. <laughs> yeah, it don't feel sick at all. It just gets straight out, real stern. Yeah, just, yeah you know, you know, he 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 jolts out and like stands up, doesn't he? I, I, I don't know, but he just it's like it comes out, out and he's just like boom, boom, and he just like, hey, all right. <laughs> in reality, uh, you're vomiting. <laughs> oh, of course, you know if something goes that fast across the entire city, <laughs> <laughs> who's building that for him? Who's building well, that? That's that's the other thing that I do like about the Nolan franchise is they explain how he gets this shit. Yeah. Whereas this one, it's like somebody at some point, the government would be like, all right, we need to keep tabs on this guy because he's starting to order a lot of stuff online and it's starting to get pretty whacked out. And, you know, like, so, yeah, I mean, there'd be a natural intrigue. He's a vigilante. At the end of the day. Yeah. So I like in, in the Nolan one, how they explain some of that stuff. It's like a dead branch, you know, a whole branch of the company that's just like underwater now. Nobody even pays attention to it. So he can yeah, just kind of use it. Yeah. All that worked. So yeah, that's the other thing about these Batman movies. It's like, how does how does he get the shit? How did he build that? How come nobody's it, actually? It was cool. Oh, but again, for me, I can suspend the disbelief in these movies because one, it is very cartoonish the whole time. I mean, even yeah. look at the, the Graysons right there. I mean, yes, it's circusy, but it's a nod, were... isn't it? It's definitely a nod. Yeah, and if you were watching a Tim Burton directed movie, it Batman, I'm saying, it wouldn't have looked like this. Even the circus. The circus would have been... No, it would have been... Like, I'm just putting my jacket on, bro. It would have been, been more like the the, the, the the train driver and his monkey in Batman Returns. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, it, it would, would be a lot more darker, like more maroon colors. Mm -hmm. I'm loving the fedora with the Rocky vibe, by the way. You like that? <laughs> oh, yeah, for sure. Good. Um, But I do have a lot of enjoyment. Like, a lot of people, when they refer to... The first two Batman were awesome, but the second, the, the the last one sucked. And a lot of people compile this one and, and Batman and Robin into one film. They don't realize that there were two movies. Yeah, um, and I'm talking it, about it's some like of the fair weather people. About. Well, yeah, uh, I think I think a lot of people were kids when they came out, and so they just didn't realize they were different. Because I do think that there's a lot of good about Forever. 
I love Batman Forever, it, I, and I know that it has its flaws. But if I want to have it in an, in an enjoyable experience, I will choose Batman Forever over Batman Returns any day of the week, even though yeah, I love Batman Returns. Batman Returns, I feel like, is more of um, a character study of a film. You get deep into the similarities of Selena. They had the whole mistletoe is deadly when you eat it thing, and it's not really grandiose and comic booky. You know what I mean? Whereas this, this was is. fresh, it was new, and it was exciting. And for for my age group, which is your age group, it was it was it was good. It was welcome. You know, I, I think it's beautiful. Um, and the way that, like you said, it freshened up the whole franchise for everybody. It got people involved again. I think that there's a lot of people that didn't like Returns because it was too dark. Yeah, I think that one hundred percent. I know my mom. She didn't. She was like, I don't understand this. This movie is kind of weird and cold about Batman Returns. She really enjoyed Batman Forever in the theater with me. Like she, she liked the whole Nicole Kidman vibe, and you know, she could yeah. relate to Selena Kyle and Batman Returns. Yeah, I mean, Nicole Kidman. I mean, she's obsessed with Batman in this film, and obviously, she, you know, she, she lures him in with the bat signal, which I don't know why um, Commissioner Gordon is allows her to do that. Like she's well, dressed he's a, in a he's laundry. A stupid commissioner in this entire franchise. That's the yeah, one of the, the things worst. is wrong. His com that commissioner Gordon is just bad from the get go. Wasn't yeah. good even from the beginning. Even though he's got some great lines in the first one, you know, hey, but, but, great, he answers to me now. You know, all that's great, but it's not the commissioner Gordon from the comics at all. Yeah, Gary Oldman so, nailed that. Carrying him on. I mean, I don't know why they carried him on. They didn't need to. Alfred was perfect. So yeah, I get that. Alfred worked to carry him on, but the commissioner, by the time he got into these movies, he was a goofball. Yeah. I mean, he was. A yeah, and he, let's not even, we'll mention him in Batman and Robin. He's a, uh, he's horrific. But he's just as bad in this, in my opinion, like this right here, when they're on the scene, which this part is cool. And one of the things I think we had to mention about these two movies is while they are sequels to the first two films with Michael Keaton, they clearly connect them. Yeah. But only a little. And they also clearly want them to be separate. Does that make sense? Do you agree? Yeah, I completely agree. You know, that I think when they're showing you in Time magazine, I'm sure he's wearing the Michael Keaton suit. Like she's obsessed with him, isn't she? So she's got she collects things on Batman. Mm -hmm. And there's a photograph, and I think, is that Val Kilmer or is it or is it Michael Keaton? Like it, he's well, definitely wearing even the lighting of that photograph looks more of like when they were on set in the first movie or something. Yeah. So yeah, you notice it and you get the vibes and it's it's like saying, like, we've not forgotten what's happened in the past, but we're giving you a new future. Yeah. And yeah. people were okay with, like, it, it, do you remember at some point it was like, who's the next Batman going to be? Like, even before, like, even after this movie, people just wanted a new Batman. Well, I, I, I only knew, I, yeah, I only knew Val Kilmer from Willow, and that's one of my favorite films. So when I heard he was going to be Batman, I was like, wow. And you know you look now on the internet and everything you can see you know who's contracted to other you know roles but when they said george clooney i knew him from from dustal dawn i didn't know him from er because i never watched it i knew him so from i was excited it. yeah i was excited too until i saw the first trailer and once i saw the first trailer i wasn't sold off of it but that was definitely kind of like Ugh. but we'll get to that because i got a couple more things we got to look at in here um, yeah, yeah well so what did you think of the plot of Forever. I thought the riddler, the, the riddles that the riddler was doing was fantastic. This made no sense. Like sucking people's I don't, brains. Yeah, and like I get it. He wants the, the the reason for them to work together is because he wants money to basically to be as more powerful than Bruce Wayne. He's obsessed with Bruce Wayne, and you you kind of feel sorry for him and the way he's got the costume on that um that machine in his, in his apartment. Oh, yeah, he, that's right. Yeah, he's trying to figure out a name for himself. Like, he's just, when you can he's see always Riddler, being a bit of a douchebag. You can see the Riddler dolls in the back and everything right there. And Yeah, and you feel sorry for him. You have empathy for him. Even when he, I mean, hours was edited in the UK. So when he kills his boss at work, they, they didn't have any spiel. So Fred Stickley, I think he's called. Uh, um, Stickle or Stickley, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because like Bruce says to him, you know, it, uh, what is it about suicide? It's, it, you know, it's not covered. And he's like, no, no, full benefits is in like, he was a good man. 
but the, in in the one we had was very edited and like it he's talking to him when he's got the helmet on and the helmet's holding him like i've seen the one that came out in the theaters that you guys have always seen but over here it was different he literally just gets pushed out and that's it oh gotcha yeah the, when he's holding from the head it's way better yeah um so you he's just had enough he's had enough of his ideas not being appreciated and i, I kind of understand that he's the underdog yeah, no, I mean, I, it worked totally for me. I liked because they ta they they tapped into a little bit of Edward Nigma, who Edward yeah. Nigma actually is, because the Riddler is just uh, his expression of who what he really wants from who actually Edward Nigma is. You know what I'm saying? It's yeah. not the same. Whereas Batman is Batman and Bruce Wayne's a facade. Edward Nigma's Edward Nigma. The Riddler is just his mask, but so he can actually do whatever Nigma wants. So I like that they showed him being sort of psychotic yeah. at this part, you know, and in this part right here. But then as soon as he puts the suit on, which don't get me wrong, he looks great. He turns into the Frank Gershon from the Batman's 1960s show, like right away. He does. But what was, you know, the, the, the what is it, pink his hair? Like he must have been dyeing his hair day and night. Well, like and that's a, in reality. <laughs> yeah, no, they were they were dying it constantly, um, and also in reality, yeah. I'm like so to be that character and then suddenly switch back to Edward Nigma. Like his hair seems really short there, and then it's longer when he's Edward Nigma. Like I never understood that. Yeah, I think that that's just them. Literally, I really think they're saying, "Oh, the audience doesn't." care about that stuff they'll just think it's like you know clark kent when he's got the glasses and all of a sudden he's you know they'll just they just think it's costume change whereas yeah. in comic book movies today they don't accept that stuff anymore they actually have i don't create... accept it <laughs> well, most of the time they don't accept they don't go that lazy in comic books anymore uh in, yeah. in the movies it's, it, it's it's what i'm saying they usually try to give you some sort of reason like these days like back then they would create the costume and it would look shitty sometimes these days sometimes the their natural features can kind of be a part of the costume a little bit like you know what i'm saying though they just get smarter with it with with costumes yeah, and, and the actors are, are prepared to bulk up beyond bulk you know like right like form and stuff well, like valkama we've spoke about this before but that's another Could, thing i don't know if you knew yeah. about this though jim carrey wasn't allowed to eat a whole lot on the set for it to keep him so slender so he could stay in that that spandex, that leotard the whole time. So that was another thing where a lot of people got to bulk up. He wasn't allowed to eat. <laughs> well, I could kind of understand that because he's got like the perfect mannerisms for it. And he, he must have learned the cane because the way he twizzles that cane. He super. actually talks about that behind the scenes. I don't know if you knew this, but if you ever find the Blu-ray, you know how they have the, the four disc movie packs you can get? Like if it's like the, yeah. all four of the lethal weapons and it's and it's got that kind of they all look the same on the, except they're, they'll show like the four posters divided on the front and all that. Yeah, yeah. They've got one of the first Batman movies. And if you did, if you get the Blu-ray one, I think it might be on the DVD as well, but the Blu-ray one, it's great, dude. I'm talking like four hours worth of special features on all four films. So right. you get to see Joel Schumacher apologizing on Batman and Robin. I've seen that. Yeah. Okay. So, but they talk about the same stuff with Batman forever and how Jim Carrey, like literally, practice 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 with that cane like he became a master at it um I, 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 as a kid i didn't know that val kilmer was having an affair with drew barrymore as well like i didn't i didn't know that either yeah that's why he split up with his wife what google i not know about any of that well no but i just that's that's just something i'm a fanboy <laughs> i'm a fanboy too you just you yeah. care about the, the demise of people i just want to see the, the fun movies right yeah speaking no, of but they, there was problems there was problems like i always thought he was sleeping with debbie mazar who plays spice but he wasn't he was playing he was with sugar now which one would you choose both of them however it depends on my mood i guess um they look great <laughs> that's yeah, all i can say they were also at their prime right then too you know yeah but what did you think about that? See, that's another thing. So did you like the fact that they went so crazy with Two-Face to where he had like two lives? Yeah. Like he, it, it, if they would have shown a more human side to Two-Face, like I said, the duality, then I would have understood it. But he's like evil in both sides. Like, right. He's like, he's torn between the two, but they're both bad guys. You know, they're not, 
It's not but like the fact she's that, like one side's giving him like this type of liquor and the other one's giving him this liquor and then the other one's giving him this nice food and the other side it's like charred boar and you know what yeah. I mean? Like yeah, it's 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 just very comic booky. And then when they stick the things to the heads and one of them's watching a devil cartoon and the other one's watching like an angel cartoon, it was just so yeah. like it's so silly. I mean, the imagery there is all great and it looks cool, but it's extremely silly. Uh, and, and again, this whole machine, like what's up with this like 1930s blender, you know? I don't know, but apparently it can suck in your brainwaves and your brainwaves are green just because the riddle is green. Yeah. I mean, again, like I was talking about thematically, they went with the green on this film hardcore. Yeah. Um, now, you know, they tried to spend some money on like the big sets and everything like that, like that party that they're at and everything like that, which I love that. I yep. also love it when um he jumps I'm off the roof. The, yeah, and I'm trying to find the picture of it. It's where he's swinging down backwards. I thought I had it in here, but I guess I don't. Yeah, I still don't know. I still don't know how they did the visual effect for Batman jumping off the roof into the chute. You know, where where Two Face has slid down. Like he jumps right off the top of the Gulf of Plaza, is it that place? Yeah, like uh oh, sorry. Wrong, wrong thing. Like man. the CGI in that part is fantastic. Hang on, I'm trying to see if we can get to them him going down in the. All right, okay, yeah, it's only a second or two before that. Yeah. Perfect. That's that mad, is, dude. That and is my like favorite scene. Is he's not trying to look cool. He's not trying to look pretty. He's trying to look pissed, and that looks yeah, like somebody is. mad. You know, you don't look it's... good when you're mad. You look the, mad. The thing is, he's mad. And that isn't the last thing that's about to happen to him. He's going to no. blow the thing up and he's going to get buried under all the, 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 I don't yeah, know and then I'm just going to, I'm coming back to it here in a second, but the idea of, or excuse me, Batman actually finally needing some help in his life. So yeah, like it's, uh, it's over and done. Oh man. Sorry. I, I, I missed it. There we go. That's uh, so wrapped up into the movie. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, and it, I just think the, the way like, He's so headstrong about helping him because he wants to get rid of Tommy Lee Jones, um, Two Face. Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah. No, he definitely. Uh, th there's weight to this movie. There's no weight to the one we're about to talk about, um, yeah. unless you want to talk about him trying to get a cure. <laughs> <laughs> but one more thing I was going to talk about is once they break the bat wing, the, the bat wing, the bat wing's, the bat wing's great. Uh, it was, but you know, it was. It was definitely a cool looking bat wing, but they didn't focus on it like I thought they were going to. You see it, you come out for a second, you see it go out and all this stuff, and you see it go open, and then that's it. And then he crashes. Yeah, you know, it's like a kind of a waste, and so is the bat boat. Like and they're playing battle. The bat boat was a little silly, but it was again a nod to the 1960s show. And they're playing yeah. battleship. You suck my battleship. Again, that he rescues him from under the water, doesn't he? Yeah. And that part's yeah. really cool too. That part's really, but I think that's, them, yeah. yo, you're right. You're right. And look, yeah. when they come up onto the actual facility where the Riddler's got his lair, dude, that's where it becomes stupid. But this is one of the greatest shots of the film right there. Yeah. Like, love the suit. Robin's, and then it's so cool looking. And he's like, holy rusted metal Batman. <laughs> yeah. Which is such a nod to the show. So, but so I, in this movie, it was okay. Like if it would have if they would have done that in a, the Zack Snyder Justice League movie or something, or some sort of it would have been terrible. But it's okay yeah. in this movie. I think I actually like it in this movie. The ground, it's all holy, you know. <laughs> it's all it's full, 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 you're resting full of holes. But even then, Kilmer's just like what? <laughs> yeah, like, <laughs> like don't do that Kilmer, again. You just didn't say that. <laughs> Yeah, but what do you think about the Riddler sort of getting more and more chaotic and more and more with the hair and the costumes as the movie goes on? And then by knowledge, point, he, yeah. knowledge is power. And, yeah, you and know, that a god am isolating. I. <laughs> yeah, it's like isolating. That? Um, it, it became he was on his own thing by this point. Like he doesn't really. Like, I still cared about him, but, like, he was beyond, like, he, he knew everything about everything. And I loved the extra costumes. Again, more toys. But I never saw the the spandex silvery one. I never this saw one. that as a toy. Yeah, Me that's either. very never feminine. Did either. The only yeah. one I ever saw as a toy was this one and then the one where he had the the coat on with the same colors. You know what I mean? Um, yeah. 
this one right here. Those are the only two I ever saw in the toys. But toys yeah. weren't anything like they are now. They just made toys to look like them. Now they make them like 20 different kinds that aren't even in the movie. And they were starting to do it then. They definitely yeah, the were Batman and Robin, they definitely did. Because it was Boy. like one where he's got skis and one where he's, you know, Jesus. bright yellow. And it's like, what's that from? It's not, yeah, it's stupid. No, it's, oh. Batman so, and Robin, let's go. Well, look, I just wanted to say one more thing, you know. I liked Kilmer's Batman. I thought he looked good in the suit. I, I thought he had the, the face for it and everything. I thought he was a good Bruce Wayne. I also thought it was funny how he looks like this with Nicole Kidman and at the same party, Jim Carrey's trying to look just like Bruce yeah, Wayne. Yeah. How's <laughs> my mole? Yeah, that part was really funny. Uh, we also got Don the Dragon Wilson in there. A lot of people don't know that, which is awesome. Yeah, I remember that. Uh, yeah. A true true and a real kickboxer like that was a star a lot of you know he wasn't a lot of people think that you know all those guys just are you know for the movies and van damme was a fighter of sorts but don the dragon wilson truly was like an actual badass fighter he'd take beatings and stuff yeah i remember that um, and then the other thing that i did like about this movie is there was some cool points with robin and him once they're talking about you know don't don't kill him basically batman's trying to tell him don't kill him when we, he's like all right let's do this we'll do it together That's be suit's decision, awful. Though. oh it's terrible this is when they started bringing in that bad stuff yeah but but, but the, what he's telling him here i like he's like it'll be your decision you know and and the whole like not a friend a partner and all that stuff you know like i just to me that added a little bit more of that depth to it that the movie really didn't have it was just more you, of a, can... a roller coaster I, I I don't think Michael Keaton, it wouldn't have worked. Would like, that I don't, No, as it, the whole scene, as in like Michael Keaton's Batman would never have a Robin. Michael never. Keaton's Batman would never have a Robin. And I don't necessarily think that Batman would, Michael Keaton's Batman would try to talk him out of killing him. No, no, he, he was quite happy to kill people. Yeah, especially <laughs> in part two, he was killing people left and right. Yeah, that's crazy, isn't it? Other people don't remember that, like, with, but that first scene with all those circus acts outside in the snow. Yeah, and, and then the big guy, fire, the big guy, went up, puts the bomb on him, chucks him down into this. It's like he doesn't even give him the opportunity. No, well, then he then he catches one on fire with his afterburner from the Batmobile. Remember? Yeah, just yeah. carries on. <laughs> so we get this at the very end, which was pretty cool yeah. because it was, that was cool really in this one. Yeah, it was reminiscent of them running off and it, it Batman and Robin, awesome stuff like that. So, do you remember after this one, people were like, "What's the next one going to be?" People were like, "It's going to be called Batman Triumphant. It's going to be called Batman Eternal. It's all these things." And yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but no, we got Batman and Robin. So you remember at the beginning of the first one, the Warner Brothers sign, yeah, starts off, twice. and then it well at the beginning of the first one it turns or the forever it turns into the neonish bat symbol ish thing. Yeah. And then this one, it turns into the ice. So when I first see this right away, I think it's going to be awesome. Yeah. I'm like, oh, man, all right. Some darkness to it. And this also is the advertisement for, which I think is a great symbol. I think it looks really dope. I, still I think adore it. it. Um, and yeah. so when you're seeing all this stuff, and there was this blue and neon purple and green with the last movie, and now you're seeing all this red and like light, light ice blue you're getting pumped up again. You know, I'm getting so pumped up. There's something different here, but as soon as it starts and you see Arnold Schwarzenegger's name before George Clooney's, Our you've got dude. problems. And then look at this. What? You can remember look. Patrick Stewart was supposed to be Mr. Freeze, not him. Patrick Stewart would have been way better. I don't even you know why. Have... why first of all, it, but... the majority of the the actor's budget went to Arnold Schwarzenegger for this. He got $25 million. Right. Okay. So right away you got 25 million going for somebody that's not even right for the role. <laughs> Everything was wrong. It, it had the ensemble cast, you know, you, you had Uma Thurman off the back of Pulp Fiction and, you know, Alicia Silverstone of clueless, but did nothing else. Like she really everything was not, wrong. She was, Right. Everything was wrong about it, man. I mean, and and again, I thought I had the poster that I didn't transfer that over properly, but well, I've got plenty of pictures of all of them. Um, so when this came out over here, um, I went to see it in the July. I think it came out in the June and it was just me and my buddy in the, in the cinema. 
And I remember saying to him, this is not going to be a hit. And he sat there in awe like this. Wow. And I'm like, no, dude, we were 14 years old. And I was like, man, this is not good. How was he liking it at 14? I could understand if you were four or five, but not 14, man. That's You're already too old for this movie. <laughs> I was I was interested in girls. He was interested in this. He was, he was like, oh, and I was like, okay. <laughs> but I was interested in that too, but this movie didn't have it. This movie was bad. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, From I want to go on oh, the wonder. Oh, so I remember, you know, okay. To repeat the same joke, I'll cancel the pizzas. And it's like, nope. oh. Don't hang up, Al. And the, Oh, but how about when he's just like, I want a car. Chicks dig the car. And then immediately he says, he says, this is why Superman works alone. And yeah. it's, dude, the face that he has, and I thought I had it in here, but I don't have it. But the face that he's using when he says it and looks at Robin, oh, my God, it's so bad. It is. It's, he didn't have the right chin for the suit, so you can see more expression. And then you immediately see him after like driving off in the Batmobile looking like this. <laughs> what what color is that suit? I have no idea what the natural color is. It's of that definitely suit. not black. It's definitely it, got a blue, it's blue in there for sure. Yeah. And then obviously he's got the black around his eyes, and it's like it, it, it doesn't contrast well. Like there's too much flesh showing on his face. It what it's it's baggy around his cheeks. Well, his he was already getting too old. Yeah. You know what I mean? He's like about 35, no. Yeah, his face was squishing up in there. You need to have, like, even if you're older and you're in good shape, you start to get extra skin. That's just the way life works, you know? And you can tell yeah. he has it there. This shot right here is definitely him looking down. And But how did they not know once he put the cowl on? It's like, Ew, your chin's way too fucking blocky. It doesn't <laughs> work right. Your voice is crap. <laughs> yeah, you. I mean, maybe... He could have done like a Kevin Conroy animated Batman voice, but not for the movies. I don't want to see a, a real life Batman sound like Kevin Conroy. You know what I mean? Kevin Conroy's yeah. voice works good for the animated movies. But... This is why, why I love the Christian Bale voice. Like if you're going to, you don't want people to know who you are. You change your voice. Like why would you not change your voice? So yeah, what? a lot of people dog on the changing voice. I thought it was great. The only thing that I think that would have been smarter is if he would have just had a voice modulator because that makes more yeah. sense. Yeah, it I does. mean, but that's a different franchise. But like that, that part where he's dropping the guy on the rope swear and he's like, me. "Swear to me, that's oh, yeah, scary, it's man." Oh, it's beautiful. Yeah. I mean, it's it's. I remember seeing that in the theater and just being like. Ah! Yeah, like, and the idea of Batman is supposed to scare you. And if you read the comics of Batman, there's so much narrative going on because that's the beauty about comics. There's always narrative. You know, you're always reading narrative, and the way they describe what's going on inside Batman's head, and the way that they always depict this character is a very dark, sinister dude. Yeah. So when Bale was doing that, it, it very much worked for me, and I loved it. Um, so yeah, you're not going to hear me complain about Bale with the voice or anything like that. And I think that that Clooney is just phenomenal actor, but he sucks at Batman. And, he, and when he's driving the, the car on the way there, right away. So you have development of characters in the last movies, even Batman Forever. You have development of uh, Edward Nigma. You don't have development of Two Face yet, but you saw him yeah. kind of in other movies, and they talk about what happened to him with the acid on the face a little bit in Forever. But yeah. this one, it's just like. There's a new villain in town, Mr. Freeze. <laughs> you know, and he's listening to this by Commissioner Gordon in the car. And then right when he gets there, he jumps in and he stands in and he's like, hey, Freeze, I'm Batman. <laughs> you know it's going to be a dud. And then he slides down the dinosaur. <laughs> oh, God. It, 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 like he's surfing. You can tell he's on some sort of device when he slides down there. And then, of course, when he gets down there, we, we see this... <laughs> What killed the dinosaurs? The, the ice, ice age. age. Yes. So I, I put this one up there just because I was like, man, we got to show that smile is just too good, dude. Like, do you, okay. Do you think that Arnold was completely just like, I'm going to give it my all? Or do you think that he was in one mode and stayed in that mode? I think he was poorly directed and i think that a lot of the scenes like take away the puns a lot of the scenes it's not even arnold in the suit 
like 25 million. It's not even him in the suit because he's got that much gear on. They didn't need to have him in the suit. Mm -hmm. So the close-ups and everything of Arnie, uh, you know, it's Arnie. And then a lot of it, you can tell it's a standard because yeah, the suit was so heavy. The suit's heavy and it, and all the graphics and everything is so silly. It's just the way diamonds, the, diamonds have energy. <laughs> dude, there it is right there. That's we're going to, but even the sets, dude, like they spent a lot of money on these sets and they, it looks bad. Like everything yeah, like, looks like a prop for a stage play or something. Yes, it does. It's like, it's very plasticky. Ooh, it's just too, too bad. And, and the way that Batman and Robin are talking to each other, I mean, that looks like a play. Yes, it does. It does. Yeah. And then obviously they, they, they do the thing with the feet and they click, click, and then the ice blades come out the shoes. Like, <laughs> there you uh, go. Of course I'm going to get a picture of that. Yes, dude, that is too good. And it's like, first off, if they told them while they were getting ready, this guy named Mr. Freeze and he's iced over the museum. Okay, I could see them believe it. putting on the right boots. But they learn about freeze on the way there. So they just always have ice skates in there. And again, where do they come from? It's so where do they come from? Uh, it's it's so like this, stupid. there's a, a device for everything. Do you know what I mean? Like, well, which is how the 1960s show was. Yeah. Yeah, the bat, the shark repellent and all that. You know, and again, I love that for what it was, but the 1960s show was very self-aware and clearly a comedy. They yeah. were not trying to be make a serious show. They were very open about that. You know what yeah. I mean? So that was cool. It worked. I enjoyed it. I have every season and the movie. But this one, flowing after something like Batman 1989, which was arguably reignited or sort of started the spark for comic book movies, X-Men and Spider-Man were the two that really blew it up. Yeah. But, yeah. But Batman 1989 is what made Hollywood be like, if done right, this can work. You know what I mean? I like, just think that movies, I movies think like that Batman Warner Brothers Rob, go ahead. Warner Brothers got involved and said, like, make this for children. Because if you read the, the, the blurb on the back of the video cassette, it says in the new fun adventures of Batman and Robin. The new fun adventures. And that really bothered me. I, as soon as I, I like I'd, I'd seen it, but I thought the fun adventures is in like you're even saying it yourself on the on, on the casing. Yeah. What do you, I mean, what do you, they, I just don't understand what they thought they were going to do with it. Like sell toys. The, the whole thing was a toy commercial. And it, I mean, and it was, but did they make that much money off of toys? No, because they didn't even have the designs yet. They'd already given the go ahead to the toy company. So the Mr. Freeze figures that were, they were releasing didn't even look like Arnold or it looked more like the, what you get from the animated series. Cause I yeah. bought it. And like, there was no likeness, no nothing. So the whole thing was just a disaster. Not even the not just the movie. The whole, all of it. Um, Poison the Ivy, whole... the birth of Poison Ivy, Doctor Woodrow, Ben. But, I mean, but I'm talking about not even considering the movie. Just the whole era of Batman and Robin with the toys, the setup, the business deal that got acquired. Like the whole thing was just a disaster, I guess. Because now yeah, what you're telling me is the way they did the toys and made them without clearing it. It sounds like a whole, like, a, a, you know, like a, that's a period of Warner Brothers they'd like to forget. Yeah. You know, yeah, not even just every, the every in that film, movie. like just everything about it. It's like, no, the toys, it was a bad experience the whole time. I, I actually, the, yeah. I actually went off Arnold Schwarzenegger because I'm pretty sure he did Jingle All the Way straight after. And like, I thought, what are you doing? Like, what, what, are you, what are you doing then? Obviously, he was goofy in that. See, and I think I, I knew he was doing that kind of stuff, and I, I think I was with you. I was kind of off Arnold Schwarzenegger, but I also thought that he was done. Yeah, you know, I thought yeah. that he was starting to like be done, kind of like yeah, I mean, he'd done, for a little while. He'd done Junior, which was a flop. It, you know, like they were trying to recapture magic from the twins. From twins. Was good, yeah, but Twins was fantastic. Yeah, I would, I'd say up to Terminator Two. You may, you know, you got a razor, but that was not a massive hit. I like you know, it, but it's not a hit. What, what I feel like there was another one that was a big end of days. It wasn't, I guess it wasn't a massive hit either. Was no, it wasn't. On six True Lies, wasn't. True Lies was a big one. Yeah, yeah, True, True Lies, Lies was a big and one. And that's a solid flick, but we're getting yeah. off on talking about Arnold now. But I mean, look, it starts off with the, the freeze in the building. And like we said, they're playing hockey. Yeah. 
<laughs> I mean, it's it's the stupidest way they freeze. I mean, that even already like that, that looks bad. It just looks. You, you see it wobble quite a few times. Oh, you see the plastic move. No question. Oh. You see it like, like that. It's, it's definitely bad. But like right here, I, what I see is Batman 1960s. Yeah. That's, that's what I see right there. It looks like they're negotiating. It's like they're having a conversation. It's like, that's not how these guys would operate if they actually were in operation, but you're right. The suit for Robin is great. Yeah, it is. I mean, I think this kind of destroyed his chance of having a really successful career. I know he's done a lot of TV work and stuff like that, but I don't, I think this, he was damaged the most from this movie. I agree. I agree. Alicia Silverstone yeah. was already just on her way out anyway. Uh, but I, awesome. I believe that you're right because he'd done son of a woman. He had done all these other things that were, were good. And, and I just using son of a woman as an example, there's more. Um, yeah. Fried yeah, tomatoes. I do. I do think that this actually kind of, however, you know, the TV, we never know what's really going on. Cause a lot of those guys in TV end up doing it because they have families and it's a nine to five job, you know, and they work in the same I, city. I do have some positives in this movie. Like I think Alfred's great in it when there's an emotional scene between him and Bruce and there's flashbacks. Eh, I no. can't, it, it's just so, I don't, but I, I hate everything Alfred said up to this point in the movie that it's just like, I'm so mad at the movie that to me, this movie, nothing could save it. It was, yeah. they, they, they crossed the threshold. You know, when you say something about somebody to their face and you can't take it back and you can't yeah. see it anymore. That's how this movie was to me. <laughs> Yeah, I suppose I can relate to that. I was like, I don't, I don't care. I don't care that you, of course, like there are moments, like there's some visuals that look kind of okay, but then you see it's like how it freezes his hands a little bit. Like, I guess that's kind of cool. But then this, terrible. Terrible. Surfing, surfing down buildings. And that, yes. that the butterfly wings. <laughs> yeah, what the hell? Like that would help anybody. But where was, why was he sending a rocket into space to blow up? It doesn't make any sense. It's the same as the, the bomb in, in Batman Forever. Like, maximum damage is going to be down below. My thinking is, is that they're trying to just create some sort of theatrical thing to make you think, oh, no, it's 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 getting higher. It's like, well, the better, the, the higher it is, you know, so... But what's uh, his yeah. motive? He just he just wants the diamond. He just, that's all he wants is the diamond. Well, he wants, yeah, and, and I think he said he's gonna slot because remember when 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 uh he was right here he's like you slaughtered thousands. <laughs> so I don't I don't know, but they blow the rocket up in the sky anyways. So yeah, I don't. And then that's when they're surfing down. Where was but he then, going? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. But then when they get down, then this that's a great. Like if that would have been Keaton in there, this would have been really cool, you know. Like it's snowing hard and all that stuff, but it, yeah. it's just so silly of why they're in there. Like that dummy that he picks up of Chris O'Donnell. Yeah. Like <laughs> no problem, no struggle. Oh, dude, he's just like, oh, let me just carry you over here real quick. You know, you probably are way more than I do, but. <laughs> <laughs> and then this is the best part is that, of course, you know, they all just happen to carry around their lasers that makes the entire water red. Of course, because um, that means it's warm. Yeah, so we can, and then of course he just got a little fake snow on him right there. Yeah, oh, did, did we get it? And then, <laughs> and then they actually made a toy of this, dude. No, they didn't. Did yeah, they? you can buy this toy where he's trying. He's got the diamond. This is actually a picture of the toy. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> yeah. So I, you know, <laughs> there's one toy I want from that movie. It might be this one, just because that's it's, that's it's such a ridiculous part of the movie. And then how about when they catch him? When they catch freeze, oh, that, I, yeah, I don't even think that's him lying there. Like, it's just, I look, I, I kind of like, I like the, the the chase sequence, and he turns off Red Bear's controls. But the CGI is pretty bad. Where it's you know they're traveling down the muscles of the arm of the statue. No, that's not bad. That's 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 kind of cool. But this right here is where he's like he catches him, and he like he just like, uh oh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And with the way he just throws his 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 cape out, it's just again, it feels like we're like, watching a stage show. Yeah, it's like I'm watching a play. Yeah. Um, now, you got her and Bane as Pamela Isley, Poison Ivy, and then Bane, which is definitely a stupidest Bane ever we've ever seen. Yeah, painted on veins. Yeah. And then I I thought I had another picture of him close by. Oh yeah, I mean, 
that is so Halloween costume, dude. <laughs> That's yeah, not, it's, it's, it's not correct. It's well, not who correct. decided like this is going to look good on film? It's like, man, this literally looks like they spent maybe a hundred bucks on it. Maybe. And that's yeah. prob probably because they got tubing and shit from Home Depot. <laughs> I tell you, the, the merging of the skinny man at 10 and into Ben, the visual effects are quite good there. Oh, that is actually, that was really good. I have to agree with you. That that worked really well when they had Lionel Luther as his doctor. <laughs> he's awful in this movie. Like, that is just cringeworthy. Yeah. yeah uh, like, he, he's a great actor, but it's just, oh, God. Everything about, I, I hate that scene. But again, I don't think he's doing a bad acting job. I think that, that Joel Schumacher is like, I want you to play an evil mad scientist like Vincent Price or something. You know, like, I think it's what he told him to do. I just, I think it's like yawn. It's like a, the origin of the well, next thing. about it's how just... she is, dude. She's such an, and she's a great actor. She's so overacting in this. And it's like, okay, but it's unethical. And, you you know, psycho? Yeah. I mean, it's so silly. <laughs> now, of course, she's smoking hot at this point. You know, well, I'm bored by this point. Me too. And it's so silly with like the vines hanging off of her and everything. This whole time, first off, you and me are, I think, we're agreeing within the first few seconds of the film we were like uh-oh <laughs> uh oh uh, i was mad i had waited like i was in, in driver's ed at the time it was during the summer i just got my license i'd driven like a bunch of my friends we had all drove to the theater i was selling it to all my friends because i was like we all love batman forever and i'm like dude just wait i'd love dust till dawn and shit you know so 1997 right yeah. You tell me one good film that came out in 1997. Everything was bad. Alien Resurrection. Uh, Lost in Space, I think, came out. The Lost there's World. Be, there's definitely some good movies. I just have to, you know, rehash them. But maybe all the blockbusters were bad. The blockbuster movies I'm talking. Like, everything yeah. that, that, that you were supposed to get excited for. Godzilla, I think that came out. Was that the year after? I'm not sure. But everything was just poor. I think what it happens in Hollywood is they definitely do get caught up in their own little trends. Things that aren't even trendy, but like if I think they're like, well, so and so and so and so studio is doing this. Kind of like the way Schwarzenegger and Stallone were, their yeah. actual careers, they started battling each other. Like, I I'm sure you know of this, but like I'll make a comedy, you make a comedy, and then it's like, no, you can have this one. Stop on my mom will shoot. And it's like And then it was a trick. Yeah, yeah, you knew about that. Whereas like he basically Arnold was like, make Stallone's publicist think that I really want this role. And so <laughs> Stallone was like, he really wants it. I want it. And they got it. Yeah. And then obviously Schwarzenegger's like, ha, ha, ha. And they did that a lot. Um, I and know. I think, I think yeah. studios will do that sometimes. And I think they get wrapped up in their own little game and thinking like, this is what we need to make. And this is really going to surprise them or something. And then it's like, uh-oh, <laughs> screwed it up. Well, how about when she kisses Robin and he's got rubber lips? Like, <laughs> stupid um or immune to your charms yeah and, and and you can it's like it only is even covering up like one little portion of his list too it's like what are you that's the silliest thing ever now again smoking hot but this scene the dance scene with the gorilla what the, the what was the point of it, it was i don't so know to introduce herself to the world but like he could have captured her right there and then if if he knew anything about her or if she's poison ivy, doesn't she just like walk into a room and shoot her pheromones everywhere, and everybody's just obsessed? It didn't. I mean, instead of doing this theatrical number, and then I like the music the, in that scene. I do. Yeah, the music's good. It's Elliot Goldenthal, but you know that they basically for that entire deal for the entire movie, they pretty much just use the same music from Batman you can feel, Forever. You can hear it. You can and filter it everything. Everything. Yeah, yeah, they didn't, maybe, they didn't score yeah. hardly anything new for it. That song was scored for it and something else, but that was it. Um, yeah, it just felt like Batman Forever, but a crap version. Like, everything was just replicated. Like, that that, that ball scene is just the same as them being in the plaza. It just felt, ugh. And yeah, then the, 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 the numbers. Let's go by the numbers. Yeah, and the credit card scene, and, and like, oh. I'll borrow it from you. I can't believe I didn't I'll, get a picture of that. I'll borrow it from you. Like yeah. and Commissioner God is not thinking, who's got five million dollars? Like, oh, oh. And, like and he pulls out that card, dude. So silly. I can't believe I didn't get a picture of that. And yeah. then look, when I saw her like this, I was like, oh sweet, this is gonna be poison ivy. I was like, all right, the vines are a little on the nose, but this is cool. Like it's hot, it's awesome. Yeah. And then this is actually what we get. <laughs> yeah, 1960 style. What the f uh, dude, I can't handle it. I did not like the way any of the fabric looked or anything. Like, I would have been really cool with her being like this for the entire film. Like, I thought yeah, it would have been more all flesh. 
Yeah. Well, but yeah. even then, it's just like if you're seductive and people do things for you, you're sort of like a witch in a weird way. And so you can, it, it just worked. But this whole thing, again, Halloween costume, that's all I see. A stage yeah, it's production awful. play for high school. <laughs> it's awful. It's worse, like it's worse than both Tommy Lee Jones and the Riddler's costume. It's just, it is bad. Now, she's a, she's a little attractive there because she's got the whole like kind of like shoulderless thing. But even the whole things on her eyes and all that, I hate it. The, the hair is way too bright. And this, like they're just talking. It, it seems like you're watching a play. Yes, it does. Every and time they're interacting with each other, there she is, Alicia Silverstone. None what a bad actually, actress, dude! So bad. And honestly, your compost. She's less hot when she has all the the outfit on. <laughs> I agree. Like I, I'm not taking anything away from her, but that, that is one miscasting. Oh, it, it, first off, she's got red hair. They didn't make her. Commissioner Gordon's daughter, but I guess it wouldn't matter because we didn't care about Commissioner Gordon in this franchise. So well, she's Alfred's a, niece. Alfred's niece, and she grew up in London, but has an American accent. And we are... and her name's Barbara Pennyworth. <laughs> what is it? It's so stupid. And that password thing, and she thinks about oh Peg. Uh, who? Why does that? What person watching that movie did that moment connect with? I don't know. It's no like he one. was. He was. He, was, he thought he was going to die, so he was, he was passing a message on to his brother, who's on a floating something as a butler. And, like, he's going to receive this disc saying, I've been looking after these two superheroes. I need you to come and look after them. Like, oh. like, I what? like that you thought that out, too, because I didn't even go that far with it. But, yeah, it doesn't make any sense that none of that I've would happen. I've seen this film so many times. Oh, I have, too. I still watch it because it's fun to watch. It really is. It's not a great film. It's a terrible film. It's one of the worst films ever made. But because of it, it's so bad that you can have fun with it. But yeah. every time they're talking, anyone having interaction together on this this movie, it's all silly. None of it, yeah. it, it is all soap opery. You know what I'm saying? Like, look at it, dude. It's all ridiculous. Every yeah, single that, time. So, and the suits costumes are, seen, like, are awful. Do you know Chris O'Donnell? Was, he saw these costumes and he was like, "This is this is going to bomb. Like, this is going to be a toy. This is a toy commercial." I think he, he says said that. that. I think so. Yeah. Like he looked at it and he was like, oh, "No." Yeah, this is definitely like God. That just looks so bad. And and did they even take time to design? They're literally just tearing up in it. But, but like, yes, right. In the plot line, you don't have time for it to design. But I'm even saying, like in real life, did they even take any any time with this? I mean, it, it literally looks like something a third grader could come up with. I just, it's so like silly, like because they've got a villain who's Mr. Freeze. They're trying to make it look like diamonds or like ice. Like but Batman's, then, like, like Robin's is okay. It's like they glued stuff on top of the suit. Like it just looks so <laughs> bad. <laughs> like I, I was, and then dude, when you're getting all this by the end of it, I mean, wait, obviously. Wait, where did you get that from? That is a toy commercial, like full on. That looks like footage, camera style footage that you see when they're advertising toys <laughs> in mm. the commercials. And, and dude, it is how, awful. Under how bad could you get on the motorbike? Like, I understand you're trying to be a little nostalgic for the 1960s show here, but that looks like you again put a piece of you cut a cardboard pizza box out and put it on the front. <laughs> <laughs> it's like when you're a kid and you put something in your spokes. It's like, oh, it's like just yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's so bad. And yeah, so this whole the movie, cure. oh yeah. And so when Arnold, I mean, you know, that that's something that we can have some fun with is Jesus. a little bit of Arnold for a second. Just because I do want him to find a cure. And that's another thing. Let me bring that up. He's got, do you know at the time, and we didn't even talk about, because we're getting close to the end, we didn't even talk about his silly. What the McGregor his syndrome? Well, his, yeah, oh, Frost, uh, Frosty. Uh, uh, yeah, Frosty. And then Vivica A. Fox as his side piece. And then when he's directing the choir and they're singing, sing, 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 sing louder. And the bad dubbing. And then how about his prison cell? I mean, dude. When he's looking at the picture of his of his ex wife, now do you know who that ex wife is? You know who that lady is? Somebody whose career probably didn't take off. 
No, she's huge and was massive before and massive after. She was a famous model. Her name's Vendela. All right, okay. So she's been on the cover. She was super huge before this. And so I remember seeing her in this, and I was like, that's that's really cool that she's in this movie. Um, yeah. And then she wasn't in the movie at all because – Yeah, she's just literally on a video screen. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So don't you – so for anybody watching this, you know, Arnold's got his funny voice, and he always talks about – you know, he says things like over there, you know, here. And so when he says cure, and then it's like, and I won't stop until I find the cure. And until, until I, I find, find the cure. cure. Until I find the cure. The cure. <laughs> until I find the cure. It's winter yeah. forever here in Gotham. It's winter it's 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 here in yeah. Gotham. So they got to have that on here. So we're going to wrap this up. First off, we like Batman forever. This movie yeah. is terrible. Batman and Robin. The decline so, starts in Batman Forever. It starts there, but it still is a very, very salvageable. Like if the other two are at like A plus and an A minus, this one is definitely Batman Forever is a B plus or a B. This yeah. one's an F. Batman yeah, and Robin. It's, it's so bad. Yeah, G. It's it's sad. It's not good. <laughs> and we also see this at the end too. Now they have like oh, it's them going. awful. Yeah, like he really would bad. he would let it be on the team. Like they need three of them now. Like what? Well, and the thing about Batgirl is, is that she's never on the team. Well, she she's technically she does her own part thing. of the squad. She does her own thing, and then she kind of communicates with them. But she's not even yeah. Batgirl all the time. It's only like when she kind of has to be. But this and the she uses a gun. In the comics, or uh, in the movies, the, the cartoon comic movies that have been coming out, I'm sure she oh, uses a gun. Maybe. Yeah. Well, there's there's been a few different Batgirls now. Cassandra Cain's my favorite Batgirl, but that's a whole other conversation. Um. But I just thought I had to show that last one since we showed the other one of them doing that at the end of uh, Batman. And I already got up and started to walk out as that was happening. It was like, I'm out. Yeah. <laughs> well, and that was before the, the post credit scenes were a thing at all. So, yeah, I was yeah. the same way. I was like, oh, here's another shot of look at that. Oh, God. Uh, she takes off a mask at this point. It's like, what was the point in that mask? Yeah. Why do you even have it if you're just going to take it off the whole time? Um, yeah, it was bad. So, if you had to give Batman Forever a grade, would you agree? Maybe like B. Now I would give it a, a B minus. Um, at the time, it was A plus. At the time, it was A plus. I've, it's my earliest memories. I went to well, no, it's not my earliest memories, but I had a lot of fun with it. Like it, it reminded when yes. I think of nineteen ninety five, I think of Batman Forever. Well, it was it, it, a lot of fun. Yeah, so like I've got songs. a lot of fun memories for it. There's nostalgia with it for me. You could turn on the radio and you'd hear a song. You'd be like, oh, Batman Forever. You know, you could turn yeah. on MTV, watch the video, and be like, yeah, Batman Forever. And the, yeah, I, I'm with you. It was definitely... When I um, listen to the Batman and Robin soundtrack, I feel guilty because it reminds me of Batman and Robin. Like, I still love Batman and Robin, but well, uh, the, the soundtrack. The soundtrack's good. It's got a lot of great songs on it. But then I hear it in the film, and I think like, oh, that like motorcycle chase that they were on. It's like all of it is not good. Did, do you know that you know the Smashing Pumpkins song that's in there? Um, I love that song. Yeah, you know that that's what they that remix version is what they use on Zack Snyder's Watchmen trailer. Yeah, yeah. Love... There's two versions on the album. Mm -hmm. You got the yeah, slowed they, down they use one. That, that slowed down one on there, which I think is great. Um, yeah. So, yep. Done. That one sucks and forever is great. So let's let's send this off with a little bit of fun with Arnold. All right. Yeah. So let's let's have some fun here. Freeze well. Stay cool, <laughs> bird boy. Can you be cold, Batman? Do you have eleven minutes to thaw the bird? That's one we forgot to say earlier. Crazy. Yeah. I'm feeling hot. I find I that unlikely. Fancy him. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we have to talk about that real quick. People watching this yeah. might not know. So they dub that really bad. What like does he say? That? I don't know what he's saying, but he's, he's saying it's winter. Is I thought he said his winter is forever in Gotham. Yeah, yeah, I get that. But what is he saying underneath it? <laughs> I have no idea. But people watching this, just watch him, and you'll see that it's been dubbed over. To my demands, it's winter forever here in Gotham. <laughs> 
<laughs> Look at all Kung Fu movies. I hate when people talk during the movies. <laughs> yeah. Cool party. Oh. Commissioner, you have 11 minutes to thaw no. people. <laughs> it's a cold. Too much, man. Like, at this point, I had stopped being angry. Always winterize. And I was starting to laugh in the movie. But there was like the first 30 minutes of the movie, I was really, really mad. Like, I was, I was pissed. I just wanted it to end. <laughs> the blood will freeze in my hands. I feel it freeze in my hands. So th yeah, I think we got all the good ones. Freezing hell, Batman! <laughs> <laughs> and I've come to make your life a living this, hell. This annoys me. Prepare for a bit of harvest. Sharing a cell with a woman. Yeah. And he's got his suit on. With what? Yeah, with diamonds. <laughs> Wouldn't he be able to just get out of there? So there Again. we go. Oh, dear. Uh, I give you credit. Edited by Dan somebody. <laughs> so, well, yeah, there well, we go. There we go. So thanks That's for good. joining me, Paul. I appreciate that, brother. We got to talk about some other stuff. I was thinking about doing the Amazing Spider-Man one and two at some point. I don't know if you're down to do that. Not soon, but at some point. Yeah, of course. Yeah, I, I, I love doing this. You know, yeah. we rip things apart. I yeah, do. It's great. So, yeah, yeah, no, well, and, and definitely with Batman and Robin, we both ripped that apart. And, and I don't think we had any, much to bad to say about Batman Forever. There are some flaws, yeah. but overall, it's still. I think it's still a, a quality film. Yeah, it's enjoyable. Well, man, yeah. I hope you have a good New Year's, buddy. And um, I know we'll Same talk personally before then, but, you know, we'll try to get this, another live stream soon. But, yeah, thanks for joining me.